Hey there, thanks for tuning in on the session about Azure API management, but from a developer perspective. My name is Tom van Houten, I'm from Belgium. I'm the CTO at Noost. Yeah, with Noost, we want to make uh, people's lives easier and more efficient. And we do that with crafting uh, solutions, end-to-end -end solutions on the Microsoft stack. We do that with a local community in the west of Flanders, in Belgium. And we try to make from there a local, a sorry, a global impact. I've been awarded as an Azure MVP for the last uh, six years, mostly thanks to my contributions in the Azure integration space, of which Azure API management, of course, is a fundamental part. All right, before diving into the developer experience of uh, Azure API management, let's take a step back and let's have a look on why API management is used within organizations. So API management is typically sitting between your API consumers here on the top and your own backend APIs that you uh, own yourself. So the consumers can be scattered around different uh, networks, uh, on-premises, different clouds available, and also yeah, over the internet with external parties. On-premises, you have your own APIs, probably also in one or multiple clouds, and also on external APIs like uh, SaaS products that you don't own uh, yourself. Then API management, what is it doing there in the middle? Eh, one of the most important things is adding a security layer. It makes sure that all the different authentication mechanisms uh, of your backend API, that they are consolidated in one unified uh, authentication experience for your API consumers. You can route APIs and merge multiple APIs into unified APIs. And you can also transform APIs. And so consider, for example, a SOAP API, you can, with Azure API management, expose that to your own API consumer in a restful manner. We can do optimizations in the API management layer by adding, for example, caching. And we need to invest there in monitoring. You will see that a lot of monitoring happens out of the box. So you have a good view on uh, how your APIs are doing, how are they performing, what's the error rates, what are the most popular APIs, and who is actually my API consumer. And last but not least, eh, thanks to the developer portal in Azure API management, you have a way to interact with your developer community. So with the developers that really consume your APIs. All right, but what's now in it for the developer? And I'm now talking about the developer at your organization that is developing the backend APIs itself. What's in it for them? Because often API management is considered as yeah, it's something that breaks the flow, let's say, yeah, but they don't see the added value always. This is the aim of this session. So first of all, yeah, by introducing Azure API management, it allows you to change your implementation afterwards. And so here currently I have developed a sales API using Swagger and the Azure, uh, sorry, the open API specification. I have two operations over there and I just import them as is in Azure API management. So. We have a get sales apartments and a get sales houses. And we want to expose these two operations as part of a bigger real estate API in Azure API management. Let's have a look on my uh, Swagger. So this is should look familiar to you, a RESTful API that you can do a get and all, get all the houses that are for sale and all the apartments that are there for sale. So what I've done already in my demo environment, I created a demo API. And I've imported here those two operations as is, and get apartments for sale and get apartments, uh, uh, sorry, houses and apartments for sale. If we have a look over here, there's nothing here in this pipeline. So this pipeline is empty and there's just uh, some XML, but there are no policies in it. So that's because the get apartments for sale and this one is just a pure path through operation within Azure API management. So here we are actually adding no value yet to the API. So if we go to my Postman, you see that I have here my URL that is pointing to the Azure API management API, the demo API, and there we do a get sales slash apartments. So I invoke this, I'm calling API management and API management is forwarding my call to the backend API. And you see that a random list of in this case, apartments is returned. We have the same here for the sales houses. Also here, a random list is returned from my backend API, but traffic is flowing through my Azure API management instance. Because thanks to this, if I later want to change the implementation or the technology of this one, we can do this without impacting 
let's say, my API consumers. The next advantage of using Azure API management is the fact that you can mash up new APIs. So in, in our demo scenario here, we have another API available for the rental apartments, so apartments that you can rent. But of course, you don't want to say to your API consumers, ah, if you want apartments for sale, you need to go to that API and the apartments that you can rent, it's another API. No, you want to have a unified experience for them. And that's where the API management transformation features come into play. So we will, with the, with the policy, transform the GraphQL API endpoint into a RESTful API operation that is part of the real estate API. So let's have a look on how we can establish this. First, this is here my GraphQL API. Okay. Start from a clean sheet again and maybe zoom in a little bit. You can do here a query and say get apartments from every apartment. I want the city, the price, and the description. If I run this, you see that we get again a random list of apartments back with the properties that we've asked. I can also include the head's balcony to see if the apartments have a balcony. So you see it's just random data that gets returned, and we see the data.apartments uh, JSON, and there we have the array. All right. So transform this GraphQL call into a um, RESTful interface. There we are using Azure API management. So I go to the rental apartments, open the policy over here, expand it a little bit, and then can we, we can see what we've done. So on the request, yeah, the request is coming in. The first thing I'm doing is redirecting to another URL because we don't want to get redirected to the REST API and the, the sales API. We want to go to the GraphQL API. Our operation is a GET operation, but GraphQL is a POST, so that's why we transform the incoming request into a POST. We make sure that we call the root. We set the content type to application JSON, and here in the body, yeah, we explicitly set our GraphQL query in the body. This will make sure that this GET operation will eventually result in this POST operation on our backend API. On the response, we also want to do something. If you have a look on the response, you see that here by default, there's a data apartments and then you have the array. But to make it yes, similar to our other API operations, we prefer here to have the array immediately at the root of our response. So that's why here the, in the outbound pipeline, so when the response gets back, we transform the response into a JSON object and select there the data.apartments array. All right, let's have a look on how this works then from a Postman perspective. Actually, from a Postman perspective, I don't see anything. I do here a get on the rental apartment. So for me, it's just open API specification. And you see everything is working as a charm. And me as a consumer, I am not aware, to be honest, that there is GraphQL running in the backend. But that's very positive. In some cases, Azure API management can also help you to mock API endpoints. And, um, for example, the front end uh, people, they want to already start uh, building your their solution, but your API, your backend logic is not ready enough. You can agree already on the contract and store maybe a JSON file with a, a static array on Azure Blob Storage and point API management to that file to make sure that at least they have a static mock available so they can continue developing while you are implementing your complex backend logic. So also here, API management can help. So if I go here to the get rental houses and open up the policy, you will see that here we will point to my Blob Storage, the mocking container, and there we point to the rentalhouses.json file. That's an array that I've uploaded, a static array with a response that adheres to the contract. That we want. I'm using managed identity to authenticate uh, to this storage account. And for the response, it's just important to set the content type to application JSON over there. Okay, so if we call this operation from within our postman, you see, it's always the same thing, doing a get now on the rental slash houses. And you should see that we get a response back. You see, every time I do a call, the response is the same. Why? Because it's a static mock. We don't generate random data in this case. 
the mocking can be very helpful in the development workflow. End-to-end -end traceability, very important. Definitely, when you start uh, linking multiple APIs together, you want to know what's happening. And if somebody has an issue, uh, he or she calls you, that you at least can see what went on within the system. That's where application insights comes into play. If you maybe didn't realize yet, but for example, if we go over here, I'll maybe take this one. In the response of API management, we always get a request ID. And with that request ID, I can go to application insights and find back my traces. So this is here application insights. And if I want to know what happened under the hood with this request, I just copy paste this request ID over here, click on the traces. Here you see all the traces, but the timeline is always more better for the visualization. And then actually here, you see what happened under the hood. So API management did it did uh, receive this call, it was forwarded to the backend, and this is then forwarded to your real backend API. So you see this is the, the RESTful interface. Maybe you can also show the other one here. This is a, a GraphQL call. So if we also take here, request ID, and get back, I can show it the search. Search also for this one. Yes, and view the timeline. Then you see also here that we have a good detail on what happened. And here you see the nice thing. Eh? We did a get on the, the rental apartments, but this resulted on a post in the GraphQL endpoint because GraphQL expects post. Yeah? So that's really nice to see those things. So end-to-end -end traceability, very important. Make sure you have every request uniquely identified and so you can find back your traces in application insights or any other tool. Another thing, of course, very important is to harden your security. That's something I've done already on my uh, non-demo API. So what we can do over there, API management has a static IP address, so we can apply IP restriction on our backend APIs. And on the front door side, we can implement Azure AD authentication. So we can enforce that you need to have an Azure AD token and that you need to have the required claims to call uh, this API. So how this is done, let's have a look on the APIs that we have available. Um, I will not go to the demo API, but I will go to my real one. This one is also versioned. And if I go here to the policy, increase this one a little bit, expanding like here. Then you see that we have a validation of the JWT token. So we make sure that the signature uh, is correct, the audience and the issuer is like we expect. And then we also validate the roles claim. So that's also a very important one. You need to have the right role. So if we go to the Postman, and I call this API, and then this one, you will see by default I'm unauthorized because I don't have a better token. How can we solve this? We need to, of course, authenticate. I can do this in a technical manner, or I can log into the developer portal where I can explore all my APIs. The developer portal will allow me to authenticate against my API. So here, I'm logged in into the developer portal. It's a little bit customized. We explore the different APIs. For me, the real estate one is most important. I do a get operation here, try it out. You see that I was logging in. So here, I can see that a better token was added. If we copy paste this, you should see here, let's zoom in a little bit, that I have the roles claim, which says I have read access on this API. If I now call this API, it should be successful. And it, indeed, I get a 200 OK back with the responses. That's a very important one. As a conclusion, very important. API management really adds value between your API consumers and your own APIs. Most important, security and monitoring. Those are the key aspects of a good API management solution. For a developer, yeah, it allows you to change the implementation of your APIs back afterwards. You can merge multiple APIs into a new one. You can enable mocking. Make sure you have end-to-end -end traceability set up. API management can really work for your end-to-end -end security. And of course, we all want our APIs to get used by a lot of people. So that's why with the developer portal, you can get broader adoption. So if you're interested in more, 
all the source codes of the infrastructure and the, the .NET code and whatever is uh, in GitHub. So scan the QR code. You find a lot of information on my blog about Azure API management. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Thanks for joining this session. Bye.